just trusted on my feeling and then the ceremony started. I was very happy. I felt nervous and at the same time so sure like this is what I want to do. My own individual journey, connect with your heart. The portal opened up from my heart and it was just the most beautiful thing I have ever experienced in my life. This spirit carries you on your journey and there you find yourself. I thought, like, can I walk? Can I walk? I'm not sure if I can walk. Oh, the whole life on earth, like it, it, like it meant nothing anymore. It, this is who I am. After this ceremony, I could never look at life the same way again. I came into this bright light and I became one with everything. And that oneness, to me, was like, this is who I am. That oneness principle changed everything to me. It changed my vision on how I see the world, how I see myself, how I see life. And a deep understanding came in my heart that this is where I came from. It was like a rebirth, being more of who I truly am, a new start in my life with a new understanding. In my first ayahuasca experience changed my life for good. But then you have to implement all of this. So not everything in your ayahuasca journey is exactly a prediction of the future. Mariette, can you call mom and explain what we did? So I called my mom and I explained that we did ayahuasca, not realizing that Maria Joana is almost like marijuana from Amsterdam. Welcome to the House of Oneness podcast, where we dig deep into the world of plant medicine to help you in your spiritual and personal growth. Our host of this podcast has traveled the world to learn from different shamans, maestros, and other spiritual leaders. She has many years of experience with plant medicine ceremonies. Here is your host, Maria Joanna. And very soon, like two weeks after, we went together to a ceremony. I did no research, I just trusted on my feelings, on my heart and on his words. It was a special setting because it was in a Brazilian church with a lot of old people, grey hair, white hair and I was the youngest there. And I thought, what is this? A cult with a lot of rules and I was so afraid to make mistakes and yeah, looking back it's funny but but then I was just, oh, I don't want to make the mistakes, I want to follow up the rules. And then the ceremony started. We needed to be separate from each other because the men and the women, they had to be separate from each other. And we were exactly in one line. So I was very happy because I never did anything to expand my consciousness. No drugs, only alcohol. So. I felt nervous and at the same time so sure, like this is what I want to do. I was happy to see him in front of me. And on the other hand, of course, it was my own individual journey, not knowing what to expect. Then they opened the ceremony with the singing. And then one by one, it was more than 100 people. One by one, we had to go to the altar to get our holy sacrament, the daimi, they call it daimi because it was in the Santo Daimi church and Santo Daimi is like, give me this holy, give me the holy medicine, give me the holy yeah, message. And after I drank this like dirty tasting medicine, I was sitting on my chair observing and nothing happened. So I started hesitating because I thought, I guess they do have an experience, but I don't. So I raised my hand and a facilitator came and I said, I don't feel anything from the ayahuasca. So I'm talking about the ayahuasca and they call it daimi. Um, and she said, well, connect with your heart. 
So I started to connect with my heart and at that moment we were also meditating together so I knew how to check in to my inner world, to focus on my heart, to slow down my breath and I thought okay this meditation technique and to focus on my heart it helps me and then suddenly the portal opened up from my heart the portal to my soul towards other dimensions opened up it was very visual and it was just the most beautiful thing i ever experienced in my life and i was not afraid of it at all because this spirit it's true this spirit carries you on your journey and it takes you and it was as if this was like as if it was like i was the baby and these were the arms that were holding me and the colors that I saw, the patterns that I saw, these other dimensions, and there there comes, there comes a part of your potential, a part of your nature that you don't have as a human being, but there it's activated. There you find yourself. There you find something that there are no words for. This was the first part and I thought, wow. But then I had to go to the toilet and I thought like, can I walk? Can I walk? I'm not sure if I can walk. And I raised my hand again, like, I need to go to the toilet, but can I walk? And she said, yeah, yeah, and I will walk with you. So she did. And after going to the toilet and I opened my eyes, that dimension was gone. But very soon we got the second round of the drink, so the ayahuasca and they, they call it the daimi because they make it in a certain way, very special, but that's another story. And when we had the second shot, they also offered Santa Maria. Santa Maria is the marijuana, but then they make this in a holy way, in a ritual. They sing for the plants while growing them. And you smoke this on this way and I don't have anything with marijuana and I thought I would not smoke it and they also recommended people who are the first time in ceremony don't smoke the Santo Maria but my inner voice and the voice from ayahuasca from the mother was so strong like do it three times but when you combine the Santo Maria with mother ayahuasca you it is like what happened to me after <sighs> like very soon I went out of my body I went through like straight to the other dimensions I saw the colors the patterns I looked at the patterns and then I became the patterns and I went through like oh, the whole life on earth like it it like it meant nothing anymore it was non-existence almost and then I came into this bright light and I became one with everything and that oneness to me was like this is who I am and I felt like I am me and I'm not me I am me and I am them and they sing for me but I am them but they are also me and the whole concept of that oneness and nowadays also my website is called house of oneness because that oneness principle changed everything to me it changed my vision on how i see the world how i see myself how i see life and a deep understanding came in my heart that this is where i came for it was like a rebirth a rebirth of being more of who I truly am, a new start in my life with a new understanding. Maybe you're familiar with this, they call this a spiritual awakening. So the change has to come from within first. And this was definitely a re yeah, rebirth to me. And the first thing that I wanted to do is 
I wanted to push this away because I couldn't believe all this beauty and I chose to follow up on my mind instead of my heart. It was really crazy. And there was a big lesson in that because when I was following up on my mind, it, that didn't make me happy, but I had, like I was busy back then. I was also training for the marathon. With the book I was busy, with my company, my relationship was a bit difficult. And yeah, it was in a way too much, but it was also very helpful. And then the other thing is that my father wanted me to be normal, which was impossible. And I was struggling inside myself, so I had the most amazing, beautiful guidance from the ceremonies from Ayahuasca. And one thing that she told me is, Marietta, because my calling name is Marietta, use your real name, Maria, that has always been in my passport. So Maria, Joanna, Katrina, that are my real names in my passport, but I was not using it. And one of the things that I saw in ceremony is, your name is Maria. I thought, yeah, Maria, like a holy name. I don't want to use this name. So I had resistance towards the guidance that I had in ceremonies. And because I thought like this, I was so amazing, I went again and again because actually ceremonies brought me so much insights, but also new questions. Only I didn't dare to follow up. And it's all about what you do in this earthly life, of course. It's not about being on the other dimensions. And I knew, but it was also so new. And I couldn't share this with many people, but yes, I could share this with my ex-boyfriend. And I felt like as if we were growing up together in this spiritual awakening. And next to the spiritual awakening, like from our soul, we did a lot of research of documentaries of like old civilizations, the pyramids, the Mayas, astrology, like we got so many interests and also quantum physics and that was amazing to share this with him and then there was a point that um, because I was not really talking about it back then and then I got a phone call from my younger sister and she was heartbroken. She was crying. She just broke up with her ex-boyfriend. And she was so heartbroken. She didn't know what to do. And I thought, you know, you should come to Ayahuasca. And I shared her, like I shared how she had to prepare, how she had to follow a diet. And I took her with me to the ceremony. And she had no clue what to expect. But this was important because she came to the ceremony, a lot of people followed and it was like this. She went to the ceremony with my ex-boyfriend, with me, I took also other friends then with me. And until that point, I thought that an ayahuasca experience could only bring beauty. But then this night was different. I was sitting in ceremony next to my sister. and. Our journeys, they became one. She was fighting against the medicine and the medicine can be very strong. So you will never win this fight, but this is a symbolic thing. So she was also rejecting something inside herself or not accepting something inside herself. And also she had to let go of something. Of course she had a breakup, so she had to let go of this ex-boyfriend, but it was something way deeper. So what happened to her is that she had an ego death. We all have an ego that makes us uh, suffer sometimes. And this part of her ego, because it was not that your ego dies and you don't have an ego anymore after your ceremony, it's just part of your ego that dies. But it's very real and it can be very scary. And she also wanted to resist it. At that point, she had also problems with eating because she had so much pain. So it was, she was basically not eating my parents they had to call her like come over and eat which she followed up but yeah there was a problem with the eating and then in the ceremony it was reflected back that she wanted to eat but in ceremony you don't eat 
So if things were the opposite and also she wanted to be with me, she wanted to be with me. And when we were younger, she also always wanted to be with me, but I went to school and then the whole day she was asking my mom, when is Marietta coming home? Because yeah, Marietta is my calling name. She was always asking to Marietta, Marietta, because she was looking up towards her big sister. And now also in ceremony, she was all the time like, hey, hey, and I thought like, I cannot concentrate on my journey. I was only focusing on her. And at some point she went away because she had to throw up. And I also didn't even know that she had to throw up because since, even since now, after so, so, so many experiences, I never throw up from the medicine. And she had a very hard time that she decided to, to go out of the group. And then I could also concentrate on my journey. And at one point she came back, she was sitting next to me. And then, because our journeys became one, she just had her ego death. And then in my ceremony, I lost my sister. She died. And I was crying, crying like so deeply. My face was completely wet of tears. And she was kissing me on my cheek, like, I love you, I'm with you. And those things are normally not allowed in ceremony. You have to be in your own space, but we were all together and like, she was kissing me. I thought, you're kissing me. You're saying that you love me, but I'm losing you, you're dying. And this was all symbolically. So not everything in your ayahuasca journey is exactly a prediction of the future. And because he has his, she had his ego death, and I also asked like, wow, but my sister wants to be a mom. Will she have children? I saw her children coming to me. Yeah, it was a very, very intense, beautiful, but also hard experience. And afterwards, I was also hesitating, like, will my sister die? But what happened to her is that she changed overnight. The next day she visited my parents and my parents were like, we have a new daughter. You have different eyes, you have a different face, what happened to you? And she couldn't even pronounce the word ayahuasca, so she didn't know what to answer. She said, yeah, I was just visiting Marietta. And we went to sit on a terrace and have a drink. It was much more than a normal drink on a terrace. It was the ayahuasca ceremony. So after a week or so, she called me and she said, Mariette, can you call mom and explain what we did? So I called my mom and I explained that we did ayahuasca. And my mother was like, okay, I want to do this too. So this is also how my mother came into ayahuasca ceremony. And later on, it took some time, my father and my sister. So that's really, really beautiful because when you're working with a medicine and this is my path, it's amazing to have support from your family and actually, like guiding my own father, that was the most beautiful experience of everyone who I've been guiding. But let's stick in the yeah to the timeline. So first my sister, she got this awakening. Then my mother also went into this, and this helped me also because still I was soul searching on like what is my path in ayahuasca. I felt like this is it, but I was never having a plan to work with plant medicine. It wasn't even in my mind. What happened first was the name. So I had to use my original birth name. It kept on knocking on my door and I kept on rejecting it. But if something is your destiny, you cannot hide, you cannot change it. And then there was one ceremony. It was a very important ceremony. I already followed up on some other guidance. Like I left my house I was living in my dream house in Amsterdam. I was renting it out for six months, not knowing where to go. I was homeless. And then I had two days left. I was almost like going back to my parents' house, but because I was still soul searching, I knew like that's not the right place to be. But something inside of me was like, follow up, follow up. So I had no house, I didn't want to be in my city, I did not know where to go. I posted on Facebook and it was like my ego really didn't like it, but I made a post like asking for help on I don't know where I want to live, who can help me. 
that led me to go back to my roots. And this place is called in Dutch Werbeshof. And you can, it almost sounds like homeless person, Werbeshof, like Zwerbershoofd in Dutch, but it's almost like homeless purple, a person. And I thought, I am homeless. I'm going back to my roots and I'm gonna live on this place. How is this even possible? And I knew what I had to do. I knew I, that I had to follow up on changing my name, but still my ego was too strong of accepting, me, accepting it and follow up. Then, while I was living back to my roots, I thought, yeah, this is even worse than being in the city. This is definitely not, not the place where I wanna be, but I don't know where. And I was still denying the step that I had to take. Then there came a point, I had so much pain in my teeth. But in Dutch, the word of teeth is decision. So I thought, I have decision pain symbolically. This is how I interpreted the communication of my body. Okay, I have decision pain. That's true, I know what decision I have to make. And this is something you feel strongly in your system. And then I went to the dentist and they said, it's in your root of the teeth. And I thought, I'm living on my root. I have the pain of making the decision and the problem is in my root. And also my name is the root. So I knew what I had to do, but I didn't dare. And then uh, my ex-boyfriend helped me. He said, do it, do it. And I remember these words, do it. And I thought, yeah, of course, when I shared my struggle and I, I asked him to help me to just sit next to me. And for the modern times, I opened up the laptop to change my name on social media with a story like, you all know me. <laughs> As Mariette Schouten from the book Quarter Life Challenge. But I've been through my own challenge. I've been through a spiritual journey and this led to a new transformation. And from this moment on, I want to ask you to call me Maria. And also I decided to make a new website with Maria Joana, not realizing that Maria Joana is almost like Marijuana from Amsterdam. So that was funny to uh, realize like people were commenting on my YouTube stories Maria Joana, like Marijuana from Amsterdam, and you work with Ayahuasca. But at that point, I didn't do it yet. And I started to share my story because when I made the decision of uh, using my names, then I posted on social media, I went to the dentist, he fixed my teeth, I walked out of the chair on the dentist, it was in the city center of Amsterdam on the canals, and the moment I stepped out of the chair, I straightly walked toward a travel agency and I knew so certain where I wanted to be and that was Bali. I thought, Bali is it. So I walked into the travel agency without thinking, something was guiding me and I said, I want to book a journey to, to Bali. And I said, for how long? And I just took the time, since I was renting out my house for six months, I took the time that I had no home to live in Bali. And it was an amazing new start of my new life as Maria Joana, where nobody knew me, where nobody was like, oh, but you're Marietta, right? It was the perfect start of a new life with my new original birth names and a new mission of bringing spirituality towards people. Because the other thing that I learned myself is technique to look inside your soul without a plant medicine, but you get the visions and I learned the language of dreams. I was all the time dreaming while I was awake. I let the visions come to me, come to me. I wrote it down, I wrote a lot and then I was translating all the symbolic languages into, yeah, yeah, I was translating the symbols and then I could understand myself. I did this research on myself all the time. I've had also, a mentor during that time that I prayed for and he came on my path but I did a lot of work on my own by myself writing researching understanding symbols 
and yeah until I found the strength in me to make the decisions and the decisions of uh, carrying my real names and also what I saw because this was the important ceremony that I want to share the ceremony that helped me was I had a ceremony in Amsterdam then I had yeah, no house I was just in the house of my sister in Horn where I'm born and when the ceremony yeah, was over normally the medicine is done you're back on earth but to me the medicine became stronger and I was yeah tripping like crazy and I thought like oh my god I cannot go home and in this place you had to drive home I had to drive home myself I was like how can I drive a car and it was stronger and stronger because the medicines back then I didn't have the strength to choose for my name Maria and I was with my ex-boyfriend I stepped into the car and I knew like this avatar this body this program knows how to drive the car but while tripping I don't even know how to drive the car and not only I didn't know how I didn't even know the road back home from Amsterdam to Horn which is very very simple and to me it's the most simple route that I would ever take but I completely forgot so I told my ex-boyfriend like be with me in my car and just help me to be next to me I wanted to drive the car and I was like concentrating like okay there is a force that is guiding me who keeps me safe and who will take care that I can drive the car while tripping like crazy it was as if there was a team of guidance and they were all the time saying like remember who you are remember why you're here remember your name is Maria carry your name with proud and then you will find the purpose and all that you're looking for because you are here for a reason and also I felt like I'm here for the spiritual awakening to help other people wake up I only didn't know back then how while driving the car then I found out I don't know how to drive so I told my ex-boyfriend please program this navigation system and then I will find the way home to Horn. While driving the car, the spirits were communicating and talking to me and they said, okay, now you're driving in the complete darkness. You don't see anything. The only thing you see is the light that you shine from your car. See this as your symbolic light from within. So you don't, know, you don't see your destiny you don't know what's around the corner you don't know what is in the new chapter but you have a feeling and that's in the light that light that is connected to the source in the same way that the navigation is connected to the satellite and the GPS is helping you you have a natural GPS that's the light and follow this light and you only know you only need that first step but you never move backwards because time even when time is an illusion, we experience that time is always moving forward. You cannot go back in time as a human being, how we experience time. So you drive, and this means you go into the future, but you only see that very first step. But when you go forward, the second step will also come into the light. And then the third step, but it's always the same. You only see the first step, and that's all you need trust in life trust in the guidance trust in your heart trust in your soul and i felt like yes i know i know so that was all about taking this name and they also showed me the navigation is your intuition so the technology also says in 500 meter turn right your intuition also says i don't know why somehow I will rent out my house I don't know why but somehow I make this decision even with my rational mind it doesn't make sense but I feel this so your feelings and your intuition that's the thing that is guiding you that's the light and that ceremony was so strong I will never forget and that also helped me to make the decision 
to take my name, Maria Joana, and also going to Bali, starting my new life. And there I start to talk about ayahuasca because I felt very strongly the world should know about this plant medicine because I see it as you come here as a soul, you incarnate as a human being, and as a human being you learn a lot in most countries to, to live from your heart and to make logic decisions. There is a path that is in a way already sorted out for you, but next to that plan from the heart, from society, we all carry a bigger mission, a bigger purpose that gives more fulfillment and many people who are on earth right now have to destroy their lives in order to find their truth and the plant medicine is an amazing tool to discover this truth, to expand your consciousness, to experience a bigger potential of who you truly are and it brings you closer to yourself. So it comes from nature and it lets you experience your own nature to also start living an authentic more natural life because all the conditions and all the programming that we learn from your parents school people around you society it's a structure that is old-fashioned and i felt this also and i think many more people feel like this is old-fashioned the school system, the society, what, like we want to live a, a meaningful life with purpose, with creativity. Like, I think sometimes that music and creativity is a higher intelligence than what we learn at this intelligence. And yeah, I saw I have a role to play in this. This is what the plants showed me, but still I had no clue. But one thing is for sure, they will always show the first step and if I don't know I do nothing but I got a lot a lot a lot of guidance and this also stays with you after ceremony because the biggest reward that I got from doing a lot of ayahuasca ceremonies is to hear the voice of my heart and my soul more clearly as if this portal is like it's cleaned up and it's more, yeah, more clear and easier to follow up. So yeah, from there on in Bali, I started mariajoana.com and so much more has followed. But I think for now, this is where I wanna close this video. And in my next story, I will share more about my journey, about what the plant medicine can do, I don't know yet, but I would love to see you in my next video where I will uh, share more inspiration. Thank you. Actually, when someone, someone is against your, um, your plans or is not supporting you, this makes you stronger. You feel even more what is your path. And then the word came to my father. I'm here because uh, I'm the father of Maria and uh, I'm curious what she's doing. And everyone's like, whoa, like, are you the father of Maria? Hello, <laughs> you don't step into the car with ayahuasca.